starting in a new scene in Blender, we're going to add a camera and then we're going to center it on the X and the Z axis. You can set the Y to whatever you want. We're going to add a cube and then we're going to add an empty plane axis. We're going to grab the plane axis, move it up on the Z a little bit, and then move it over to the left a little bit on the X. Once you have that done, select the cube, open up the modifiers, and add an array. You're going to uncheck the relative offset and check the object offset. And open it up, set it to empty, and then we're going to set this to like 7. We're going to grab the empty, and we're just going to move it around a little bit until we get it how we want. I'm going to size it down a little bit. So we got something like this. It's basically the empty just over there where the second cube is and it's sized down a little bit and it's giving it this effect and then after that we're going to add a mirror on here and we're going to add another empty plane axis we're just going to leave this one in the actual center select the cube again and then in the mirror for the mirror object just select the new empty on the x and the z and then we're going to go into the camera settings actually we're going to go into the output properties change the Y to 1080 just so we have a rectangle shape you can do the render settings however you want I just want it to be the rectangle shape and then we're gonna grab the camera and we're just gonna move it back a little bit on the Y so we can see more now we got this we're gonna click on our cubes at the beginning of our animation I'm just gonna do a 250 frame animation I normally leave it around there I find that to be good and then we um, click on the cube and add a keyframe by pressing I on the location, rotation, and scale. And let's go to like 80 frames in, and we're just gonna grab the cube, move it around to like there, double tap R so we can rotate it freely. Let's set it like something like this. Then we're gonna insert keyframes again, move it to about 150. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to move the cube again, size it, rotate it however we want, I to insert the keyframe, and then we're going to pull this up just to be a little more control. We're actually going to move our keyframes back a little bit so we can have four, and then the repeated one from the beginning. So let's go around 170 doesn't necessarily matter where you're going or what you're doing with the keyframes, I just like to space them out evenly. And then we're going to rotate this again. And then move it. Change the size again. And insert the keyframes. We're going to go all the way to the end and then over one more. Click back only on the beginning keyframe while having your mouse over the timeline. We're going to hit Control c to copy. And we're going to paste it at the end. That way the end is the same as the beginning. And if you play it, it will be a perfect loop like this. I'm going to scoot the camera back a smidgen now too. So you can capture a little bit more. And then about that. Now that we got that down, we're just going to open up the shading. This is a very simple shading we're going to do on this. Go to viewport shading, click on the world, and we're just going to change the background to black for a second. Click on the cubes, add a new shader, can add a color ramp. I'm going to set it to HSL and FAR. And set it to, let's say, green on both sides. If you have it set to the same color on both sides, it will make the whole spectrum. And I'm just going to drag this green to the middle, and I'm just going to add another one to the top, and we're just going to make this one like red, just so we get some sort of rainbow scheme going. While well clicked on the color ramp, we're going to hit Control T if you have no Wrangler enabled. If you don't, enable it with Edit Preferences, and then go to Add-ons and search for Node Wrangler. I'm going to delete the image texture this in like this and then we're going to search for a layer weight and then plug 
this in in between. And the top plug into that, and then we're gonna take the color from this and just plug it into the emission. Right now this looks kind of weird, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a wireframe modifier to this. We're gonna uncheck replace original, and we're gonna change material offset to one. And we're just gonna set it to, and set it even to relative. Go back to materials, and we're just gonna delete this one, add a new one, let's make it a glass, let's make it the roughness all the way down, and then we're gonna add a second one, and then we're just gonna select that first material we just made. And now that's on the wireframe. If you see, we play it. It's looking pretty cool with the colors. And you can just mess around with the color ramp to get it however looking you want, whatever colors you want. This looks pretty nice, but to get the super cool effect, what we're gonna do is something very simple. We're gonna go back to the beginning, and we're just gonna add a picosphere with four subdivisions to start. Right click and we're just gonna shade smooth. You can't see the icosphere because it's inside the cube, but we kind of want that in the beginning. I'm honestly gonna size it down just a little bit even more so it's definitely hidden. And then we're just gonna insert keyframes for the icosphere at one, and then we're gonna go halfway through, which would be 125 on ours. And then we're just gonna size this up a decent bit. Just gonna insert keyframes again and copy the key from the beginning, go over one more so we're one past, and then paste it. You can go and switch to shading. This doesn't really look like anything right now because this icon here is blocking, but if you go and change the material to a glass shader, and then turn the roughness all the way down, and then go to the modifier tab and add a solidify. This gives a sort of cool effect uh, right in the beginning without even messing with that because if you pause it you can see if you mess with the thickness it gives a banding sort of look. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the front to the first keyframe and we're going to put the thickness at like 2 and then we're going to right click on the thickness and the solidify and hit insert keyframe. We're going to go around here we're gonna divide this one into uh, thirds. So we're gonna take the thickness and we're just gonna pull this thickness so it's like this. So now it's at like negative 0.1, not negative 0.1, that's two, negative one. And then insert the keyframe, go to around here, switch it back to like, let's do four. Insert the keyframe and then go to the end. Move it over so it's on the end keyframe. And then copy the thickness from the beginning, which I think was two. And then we're just going to insert the keyframe. Now, if you can look, the glass gives it really cool effects because without the glass, you don't even have that stuff on the side. Now there's one more step to achieve the look we had in the beginning. What we're gonna do is we're gonna switch back just to viewport shading real quick. We're gonna add another icosphere at four. And then we're just gonna size this one up a lot. Right click shade smooth and just size it up until we're inside it. And then we're gonna switch back to rendered view. And on the icosphere that we're inside of, we're gonna add a material. Just turn the roughness all the way down and the metallic all the way up. mirror effect in the background based on it. You can move it around to get it differently. I try to keep it as centered as possible. And then I might even add a subdivision surface to this just so it's even a little smoother and we get even crazier sort of ripply looking stuff in the background. Size it up or size it down. I'm gonna just get it back to where it was looking like that. And if you look, it's about that big. So that we have that. That's a 
effectively pretty much how you do this. To render it out, what you're gonna wanna do is just go to your output properties. I'm gonna make a new folder on my desktop. We're just gonna call this glass orb distort. Then we're gonna click on the output folder, go to desktop, choose the folder we just created and hit accept. And then we're just gonna render it as a PNG switch back over to the render properties and then the time limit we're just gonna lock it to 60 seconds so it doesn't take forever to render and uh, we're just gonna go up here switch back to viewport click render we're gonna render an image just to test it real quick see if it looks nice it's looking pretty cool so after we make sure it's looking how we want we're gonna go render render animation and it's gonna start with frame one just gonna render them all through and then after you do that you can compile it um, I will make a video on how to compile it the link for that will be in the description or on a card in this video you can click on that if you don't know how um, yeah I hope you guys learned something about a simple way to use array and glass orbs and mirrors to make stuff look very interesting um, I've got a couple more ideas planned out to be able to explain how to use reflective surfaces and glass surfaces better to make even more complex and interesting things. So if you learn something from this, please like and subscribe so when I release those next videos, you can learn something from that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a great rest of your night and go create something.